welcome to the Staff Canteen Live Lockdown Lock-In. I still can't say that. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited. Welcome to our virtual pub. I have all of the things going on that I could possibly be going on. Um, I have a gin and tonic. I hope you all have a drink as well. And my snack of choice is a crisp sandwich, which I've no doubt is controversial. It's white bread, cheap white bread, and it has butter on and it's plain crisps. So up to you whether you like that or not. So uh, joining me for the very, very first lockdown lock-in, let's uh, introduce our uh, first guest. So he has his fingers in so many pies, I can't keep up with him. I don't know whether he's writing a book, he's on telly, uh, opening something else, I don't know. So let's start with Mission Star Chef Tom Kerridge. Tom, are you there? Hello, mate, how are you? You all right? Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you, I'm good. Good, welcome to my virtual pub. I, I love it. It's I've very, very, very similar to the hand and flowers. Well, I know. Well, would you have a, a spinning wheel of truth in the hand and flowers? We've got one in the kitchen. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it all comes down to who does clean down last. That's what happens. They have to spin the wheel of truth. <laughs> so, the loser um, normally ends up with no trousers on. Nice. I, I see where this is going already. I just made so. it up, but now we're, now, now we're after 10 o'clock. I mean, we, 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 we haven't got to pretend that we're on television at 8.30 on BBC Two anymore, have we? No, exactly. We can say whatever we want. So, uh, what snack have you brought? Because I feel like I'm winning at the minute with my crisp sandwich. Yeah, you're definitely winning. I, I bought um, I, I grapes, so I was grapes and a lump of cheese. And you went with cheap, um, you went with cheap white bread. I'm, I'm all over the cathedral city. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Chocolate cheese, bit of grapes. Cathedral city grapes and my chosen drink of the evening because I am now so fucking rock and roll. It's a cup of coffee. Do you know what? we? When I went through this and how it would work, one of the people that pretended to be you was coffee. And I said, no, you can't drink coffee at 10 o'clock at night. You won't go to sleep. Fuck me. I drink coffee all night long, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it, is it, that's, it's my only vice, actually. The, the only things I've got left is caffeine and swearing. Everything Caffe else is. Wait, they're not bad vices, though, to be fair. Right. Well, I've, done, but... I've done everything else. We're not allowed to do them anymore. <laughs> right. Let's bring in our next guest. It's uh, celebrity chef James Martin, who apparently, according to Wikipedia, which has been a lot of fun, I've been using that today, um, he loves all things fast. So, James. <laughs> How are you doing? Hello. How are you doing, mate? You all right, Carol? You all right? I'm all right. You okay? Very good, buddy. Yeah. Is that a pint of gin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's this normal, but of course it's a pint. It's number four. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second bottle. And this oh. one, halfway through this one as well. What I'm gin are you drinking? What gin is it? Uh, forages. Oh, nice. <laughs> I've got a new one. I've got a Quaker's gin from Darlington. All right, okay. I'm going northern. That's right. northern. So I've got that one, yeah. Nice. Have you got a snack? Yeah, I've got a little homage to uh, to Tom, really. I've got skinny popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not eating it, but I'm having some chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> Is chocolate it, and, is, chocolate is it and salted gin. popcorn? Because salty and sweet is like the best thing ever. So. I've, got, I've, got, I've got this one, salty and sweet. Yeah, that's why I'm having small bags though. I don't know what went on. But. <laughs> <laughs> right, and let's not forget about him because he's waiting. So possibly the <laughs> nicest chef in the industry, Mission Star, Paul Ainsworth. Hi, Paul. How are you? Oh, you need to turn your video on. There we are. How are you doing? Well, you all right? Good, thank you. All right, you. lads. Honestly, when you said nicest chef from the industry, I was waiting for Richard Corrigan to turn out. <laughs> fucking that close. <laughs> next week, next week. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's training course, Paul. Or something. What's wrong with your hair? What's happened? That's new look, mate. New look. New look. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Unbelievable. He looks younger again. He looks younger than when I first fucking met him. <laughs> Who did it for you, Paul? Did you do it yourself or did someone do it for you? No, I'm very lucky. Uh, my wife, Emma, is a hairdresser, or used to be a hairdresser, so she oh. does it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, we've gone there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So what drink have you got? What snack have you got? Are you beating my sandwich? I'm not really beating your sandwich. I have got um, crisps, kettle chips, and 
a nice beautiful glass of water with ice and lemon because it's good for my skin you see <laughs> Is that the curious? I knew you'd love that one, Martin. <laughs> I don't believe you. That's definitely not water. Oh, it is you. water. Trust me, it is water. No. <laughs> when I got a phone call saying do a lock in with these two gentlemen, <laughs> one of them doesn't drink and the other one can't drink. <laughs> <laughs> can't well, drink and won't drink. <laughs> James, it's me and you then. Me and you are going to be pissed by the end of this 30 minutes. Uh, these two are going to be worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> right. Thank you all so much for doing this. Um, it, uh, it's so good to have you all in in one in one virtual pub. Um. So just to start with, before I go into any of the questions, uh, obviously we're all in lockdown and it's a bit shit for this, everyone that's in the industry. So how are you dealing with lockdown? What are you doing? Uh, I know Tom, I'm sure that you were like proofreading your latest book, which is The Hand and Flowers, which is amazing. So that obviously is keeping you busy, right? Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I'm. we're in the process of um, the final proofreading of The Hand and Flowers book. It's been a massive process in getting it um, done it's been I don't know years in the it, actually it was the deal for the first book deal that I've done but however it's now there's I think it's the eighth or ninth book that's coming out so it's but it is the complete recipes or they are the recipes 60 recipes from the hand of flowers and they're the complete ones they're not really for the home cook they are the exact recipes that we do um, at the hand so we're there's me and the the head chefs in the businesses so Chris and and Jamie and Tomo and Nick have all got a copy of it and we're all going through it with a fine tooth comb and just making sure that all the recipes are correct and they all sit properly and and that'll be released uh we think um if we've just pushed it back just a little bit because of obviously the situation is going on but it's going to come out i think we, we think towards the end of october okay and that must be like a like baby for you right that's a big deal yeah it's massive it's something we get it's something we're very proud of you know it's 15 years old the hand of flowers this year so it's you know we, we it's it's kind of uh it's 15 years in the making this recipe book and it, it, and it, we're very excited for it to come out yeah we're looking forward to it loads so so that's what we got that going on at the minute as well as loads of other bits and bobs we filmed a couple of videos of just cooking random shit from the fridge and um and then generally hanging out um i go into the office probably three or four times a week and then meet the ops director there and we're just kind of building business scenarios of what's going on because of there's like seven businesses in total there's the three pubs and there's the two restaurants then there's uh, the event business and then there's the festivals and so there's a lot of you know there's a there's a there's a lot of people and a lot of money we're losing right now so we were trying yeah. to work out how to stop losing so much money yeah no absolutely i think that is definitely a resounding thought throughout the industry and paul i mean you're feeding like the whole of padstow that i can see on uh, <coughs> on social right so is that still yeah. happening yeah, absolutely. We do it um, every week. We wanted to make sure that we had like longevity to it because, you know, it's easy at the beginning to sort of just keep doing it like every other day. But we wanted to kind of do it throughout the whole duration. So we feed Padstoke Rock uh, that reaches out to Poles F. Um, we've got the lads from uh, Cafe Reggiano who feed all the key workers and uh, a lot of the NHS staff um, in Weybridge. So we've kept it really, really local, trying to support like a lot of the fishermen, because as you can imagine, down here in Padstow, um, we've got a lot of fishermen that right now are, you know, in real serious trouble. So, so we're trying to support them as much as we can. Uh, and kind of, yeah, much the same as Tom, I'm, I kind of go in um, most days, um, check on the businesses. I'll meet Alex, who's our ops director. We'll kind of plan the strategy because, yeah, the... The sort of the closing is it was hard, but the, the reopening is going to be, you know, that's going to be the one. How that looks, how we how we kind of pitch that and, and get through it. And there's so many sort of questions that you can keep asking, um, but you've just got to just take it, you know, each day and keep planning. So, um, yeah, there's plenty to keep them going. But do you know what? It's been amazing to spend time with Ems and CC and, like that's 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 been the kind yeah. of the positive side to it that you know that ordinarily especially with a recent sort of starting school this year it's just been great to just be with her kind of as much as I have so yeah that's what I've been keeping myself busy with yeah it's important to take the positives out of it isn't it it's important to do that and then absolutely James, James what about you what what are you it must be weird that because obviously you're used to going in a studio full of people and now you obviously can't do that so what what's it like for you 
Uh, I've been trimming my balls, to be honest. Privet balls today. That's <laughs> 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 what I've been doing. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I bet there's... Five minutes in that... and we're on balls already. Brilliant. That's what I've been doing. You know been... the only one that's in isolation has been doing that, I bet, mate. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, ninety percent of my ninety percent of my chefs have been looking at the internet and playing with their balls. Uh, not playing, <laughs> trimming them, you muppet. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I've been in the I've been in the garden. I've got a I'm I'm big into gardening away from away from cooking. So I've been spending a lot of time in the garden the last sort of week doing gardening. Um, and I've been making pasta really and doing stuff, trying to do stuff for the local village where I live. Is is a, a little bit more remote than these lads. Um, so I've been, I had the, I managed to grab the pasta machine out of the restaurant, a few bits of kit. Um, I've been making pasta for the village. To, to, I've just put 40 bags out there today for free and people are coming out cycling and getting some pasta at least and some flour and some eggs for people and um, just doing what you can really. Uh, it's yeah. quite difficult when you're, when you're kind of stuck here. Unfortunately, I've got a few restaurants and airports which don't look at, look at, opening anytime soon um yeah. and then i've got you know Chute and glenn which hopefully fingers crossed that'll be the first one and then of course we've had a restaurant in manchester for nine years uh so the casino so who knows you know i'm i'm, I'm actually to be honest i'm i'm feeling positive i'm i'm actually looking at looking at a pub now i'm, I'm thinking about you know do i do i get somewhere uh take this opportunity to start afresh and and do something new you know and and uh take the team that you've got on and stuff so yeah, you, you've got to be positive, haven't you, really? If you, if you didn't, you, you just, yeah, it would just do you in. Sorry, I'm giggling because I've got comments coming in to the side of me about your, about your bush <laughs> comment. So, so many rude comments. Why did I say I'd do this live? Well, they look a bit like your hair at the moment. <laughs> Shiny. <laughs> I hope you're talking to Paul and not me. <laughs> or me. No, it's that particular if you go that short, you know. <laughs> right, I wanted you all together because I know you're all friends. So we want to know a bit more about you guys as friends. So how did you all meet and did you all like each other? Because I've got a friend who, like my best friend who, I didn't like one of them at the start. I love her now. I hated her at the beginning. So what was it like? Like Tom, how did you meet um, Paul and James, and, and did you like them? So um, I've I've for I worked with Paul. I've known him since he was eighteen years old. So we have worked um, at Gary. Did he looked like that. Paul looked. He looked. Yeah, he, he actually looked older than that when he was eighteen. <laughs> but he's, he's gone backwards. Look at him. I mean, he's unbelievable. But he, he's um yeah. <laughs> so Paul. So Paul. I, I was a junior sous chef at one of Gary Rhodes' restaurants in Pimlico, Rhodes in the Square, and Paul was in there as a young commie chef. This was actually before Paul went off to work for Gordon. So I've known Paul since he was 18, and, uh, and so that's nearly tw over 22 years that I've, always, I've thought he's a massive idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and that right though. there professional recognition yeah <laughs> and, and, that, and that right there is why he's godfather to my son <laughs> but also and, and then i met james um i met james for the first time when i went on saturday kitchen many 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 years ago um and saturday I, james has been i you know he's such a support of chefs and young chefs and people in the british food scene when you go on there and it's the first time of doing live TV and it's terrifying. You know, it's really, you know, when James was on Saturday Kitchen, he was getting, I don't know how many million viewers and it was all live and it was all, you know, it was really nerve wracking. And James- Three and a half million. How many? Three and a half million. Three and a half million. So, and he would always be, he'd do an amazing job of making you actually feel quite comfortable, don't worry. And you felt in very safe hands. And it wasn't just that. It, James's actual ability to cook is, is fantastic. So it, cooking live, interviewing looking after chefs looking after guests and that was in the day as well when there were two guests that would always turn up from the members of the public that would be in saturday kitchen i don't know if you remember it was that long ago like it was but it was and, and we've got on really well since then you know it's been you know james has been a real because of james's 
ideas of food. It's always really solid. I think the three of us <coughs> cook very similar food and have the same viewpoint on produce and farmers and Great Britain. We're all very proud of where we are and work and cook. And, you know, so we've always gelled really, really well. We've, we've just got on really well. Okay. Okay. So James, how did you meet um, Paul then? Because obviously we've heard everybody else's. So how did you oh, meet well, I'm at, I'm at these two, these two on Saturday Kitchen, to be honest with okay. you. Uh, I wanted Brian Turner and, and uh, Rick Stein, but they weren't available. Tom who? <laughs> well, Tom's got this pub down the road somewhere. Yeah. He does all right. And, and that was it. That's how, that's how these, I met these two. And, um, you know, it, it takes... Uh, it takes big kahunas to come on uh, on, a, on a live show, particularly back then and the nature of what it was. Um, it, it, uh, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of pressure and, and I admire everybody that did it. And I admire, I admire chefs, to be honest, because these two guys can cook the rings around me. They're, 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 they're geniuses at their field. Um, you know, I know my place, I know what I do, um, but if I can support them in my way and, and help them <clears throat> in terms of what I can do, in terms of give them a voice and put them a platform, and then you get pissed off because they go away and run away with it and win everything. Bastards. <laughs> Honestly, J J this will come back to the GQ award. J <laughs> That's nothing to do with GQ awards. Nothing to do with that. <laughs> I'm so Not intrigued yet. by this GQ Not award. Yet. I've got another, another bottle of gin to drink for that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I found out how you were all friends. Did you and you all liked each other straight away? N none of you actually admitted that. Uh, yeah, no, very, very much. Yeah, I mean, you know, I kind of got on with you know, Paul. I still struggle with. I got to be honest, you know, that, like I, I have to be honest. I like his he wife. He sent you gifts. <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to break. You know, he's just trying to break it. I, I, I love his wife very much, and it, you know, his daughter Cece. There, I get on really well. I just put up with hanging out with Paul. <laughs> James has always Whoa. been a great man. I love James, but you know Paul's just kind of there. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, actually, I've, Paul's Paul is one of the most genuine, lovely people you're ever likely to meet, and we probably speak twice a week. You know, and and uh, uh, just about general stuff. You know, uh, you know, we both had kids at about the same time. Uh, you know, there's a couple of months between them, not much. We, we 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 both of our lives are very much in the same sort of space in terms of restaurants and places. So we we yeah, we genuinely get on really, 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 really well. <laughs> Good. Well, you might not after I've finished with you. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a game friendship game have you got have you as chefs have you read the briefs that said can you have a piece of paper and a pen ready no um, oh Paul uh, I knew you would, you would. <laughs> <laughs> whilst yes. you're looking for a pen and paper yes I have yep I've got Ian Ross wants to know who's wearing the most expensive pair of pants Edward <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And what make are they? Definitely uh, Ainsworth. You cannot. I mean, I'll go. For it. Ninety quid for a pair of Tom Ford pants he wears. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have to do to get a G. Just get one pair, or would you get like a three? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> there you go. I'll go with Ainsworth. I'll, 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 I'll take it. I like there pants. You go. I, I think it's. Good it's, a, it's, it's, it's not. A, it's, is it? It's not a lot to write down, is it? Because this is my. No. Water, I've got to learn on guitar. No, and you you'll probably just shout it out anyway after I've made you get that piece of paper. So right, so friendship game. Who has the biggest ego? Write down one of three. Oh, it can here be we yourself. Go. It can be yourself. <laughs> I mean, and show me. Out. You just hold it up to the screen like that. Right, hold on. Let me get a bit. Right. Biggest ego. You you weren't wrong when you said we might not be friends after this. <laughs> so I've got one. Come on. <laughs> Did you get mine? What are you saying, Paul? You're the deciding yeah. vote. Oh, I'm the deciding vote. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> these are two big personalities. <laughs> Personality and ego is very different, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I am going to go with... I've even done it in gold. 
<laughs> we speak twice a week, so I know he'll forgive me. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you know that in rehearsals. That did not happen. <laughs> In pretend Tom that did not happen. <laughs> no, honestly, I, I I I'll take that. I don't mind having an ego. You know, yeah. Eric, Ca Eric Cantona had an ego. <laughs> yeah, legend. He, legend. He also kicked someone in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking genius. Yeah. Okay, so we've established that Tom Kerridge has the biggest ego. I mean, <laughs> right. who is the best chef out of you all? Oh, come on. Fucking Come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that just backs up question one, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ah. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So Tom said himself, obviously, because we've discovered that Tom Kerry has an ego. But James said you, Paul, and you said Paul. So James, why Paul? Well, I've tasted both their food, and yeah. Oh, you know. <laughs> 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 And Emma, can you fill this with gin, please? Yeah. <laughs> can we fill this up with gin? Then in the dumb carriage, you go there. <laughs> that, that's nice, though, Paul. You're the winner of the best chef. But, but, well, uh, yeah, humbled, even they though I did vote for myself. I lose the haircut round. Don't worry about that. <laughs> right, next question. Who would make the best prime minister? Oh, <laughs> so James, you've got that one. As prime minister, what was the what would be the first thing you'd do? Go and open a fucking restaurant. <laughs> yeah, that's the, it's the nightmare. It's the hardest job. It's uh, uh, I don't know. I see myself as a. I'm okay at business. I'm, I'm quite. I think these guys know. I'm pretty pretty sweet streetwise. I'm I'm okay at business, but. Um, what yeah, he means is he's from Yorkshire and he's tight as fuck. Hey, I'm from Yorkshire. <laughs> Says the guy talking to us in candlelight. Switch the light off. <laughs> you know the hand of flowers is shut, but you don't have to sit in darkness. He hasn't taken his card down at the corner shop and Yeah, but he does that. He's in darkness, then he goes outside and gets in his 120 grand Porsche. That's what he's doing. <laughs> No, I, I had to sell that. <laughs> yeah, no, he's actually being very clever. He's told me he's not showing you how big his house is. <laughs> <laughs> True. Right, yeah, that is, that is a very yes. good point. <laughs> how have you described the noise of the River Thames, Tom? The what, sorry? The noise of the River Thames coming right past your door. Where, have you disguised the sound of that? I, I've, I've, I've shut the doors. <laughs> and, there's, and there's no boats going round it at the minute. <laughs> Rowers don't make a lot of noise, James. I've got metal shutters. <laughs> right, last question, last question. Who would be the last one to get around in at the park? Oh, you know, I'll tell you this straight off. <laughs> yeah, straight off. Whilst you're doing that, someone's asked if you can all go on a televised road trip. Just <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. That's because you're the drinker. I got I gotta be honest, actually that I don't I think I'm not I don't think if every they're both really generous. That's quite a hard one. I think everybody that that's there's no and so Tom. Get in. yeah, everyone would get around in. James is saying both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be honest, if we were out with James, we'd let him fucking pay. Let's go. Yeah, Jay, yeah, Jay. <laughs> Look at his background. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anyone who's doing this from their man cave with a pool table and a motorbike in it, and a, yeah, yeah, James can pay. I'm okay. switching light on. This is, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ainsworth's we're sitting in the Cornish gallery. Look at him. Yeah. I know. I was like, where are you? You, you, wherever you are, looks amazing. It's like he's in the oh, gallery, I think is Ainsworth. <laughs> where are you, Ainsworth? Where are you? Just a bit of the house. Have you? <laughs> yeah, but what have you got behind you? Because you told me I did ask you that earlier, didn't I? I have got. Yeah, he's a. It, no, it's a beautiful piece of artwork. It is um, it's by an amazing artist called James Cullen, who happens to be Tom's father-in-law. And uh, yeah, it's very special. So it was, um, it was for Emma, and it's called Across the Crowded Room. Well, and, it makes a, and it makes an, a banging Zoom background. <laughs> it's not as banging and he, as and he paid though. twice the price for it. <laughs> 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 Right, another <laughs> typical chef thing that has happened is like asking all. I'm now on three quarters of a bottle. Jesus, James. What's this? So, another typical chef thing. I did ask you all for a story about yourselves that was secret, and one of them I wasn't allowed to say because Paul changed his mind. But was <laughs> one that I was allowed to say. Who was it? Who was who was Paul's stories about? Uh, I I put two in. I put one about one you, you and I put one, one about Tom, Tom like... but I changed my mind on the... I, on it, Tom, I couldn't honestly think of a story we could actually say on here. <laughs> he, he retracted <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Tom was retracted. So I, I, I was muted. I mean, I'm not allowed to say that one, but... Which one, James, you, so which one were you half about to tell Paul? The time when we left the hand and flowers in <laughs> your red car and bumped into a policeman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good, yeah, no, don't say that one. No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> don't, say, don't say that one. <laughs> what was that one? What was that one? Nothing. No, we can't. <laughs> I've, I've got it written down. No, on my Wikipedia page, Tom. I'm, I'm no, I, honestly, if 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 all how for those stories come out, I know there is a controversy bit on my Wikipedia page. But if any of like if only like three of those stories that there's a lot of them about came out that way, I'd have my own Tom Kerridge controversy Wikipedia page. It would just be so <laughs> long. There would be so Amazing. many. And I just like that out of the three of you, you're the only one that has a controversy section. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I and was with him. When, I was with him on that occasion as well. Perhaps, perhaps, it's the, perhaps it's the company he chooses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god. So my story that I am allowed to say, well, I don't know what the story is. I've just got a line. Is James? I've been asked to ask you about the time that you and Paul lost your boat off the Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, this is quite funny. Uh, well, Paul could probably say it better than me. It's Paul's story, sir. But it, it, it was quite funny. It all, it all started the night before when we went to this restaurant. And to be honest with you, we went to the restaurant. It actually started the night before that. There was a guy called Johnny, Flying Fish Johnny, who's a legend. Oh, and I interviewed him in a very serious capacity, but go on. He's <laughs> a, a bit of a legend. Anyway, he decided to pay the bill for the food on the first night. And uh, it came to whatever it came to. And I said, look, I'll treat you to guys. You can come on the boat and you can chill out. So, so off we went. We had a great weekend, didn't we? Yeah. So, so the, the first night, Johnny, anyway, the second night, Paul decided that um, he was going to buy the second night food. Anyway, uh, there was a lot, there was a lot drunk. There was a lot, a lot, a lot drunk. <laughs> and um, the, the basis of it is I turned around to both of them. I think I said, you guys, did I say you guys are carry me? I can't remember what I said. You carry said, me. your words were, you're going to carry me out of here. Yeah, that was that. And, 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 you know, when you're getting off, yeah, I'll, I'll pick up the, I'll pick up the tab. And he was drinking, he was drinking Corton Charlemagne at 200 quid a bottle. After about the sixth bottle, right? When he says, when he says a lot was drank, he drank a lot. 
Johnny Godden was Johnny yeah. Godden was was so passive that he was pouring a two hundred pound bottle of but like Burgundy over ice like a spritzer. Right, I'm just watching these two muppets like like get dry. I'm like, what is going on? And then yeah, anyway, 12, 12, 1200, 1200 quid later on the Isle of Wight. Yeah, but cue the following day. You want about the boat story? So I was on the gin and tonic like you would do, Cara. You know, gin and tonic. You're on it. Yeah. Yeah, beer, neither of them drink, hardly anything. So yeah, we're now... Was it Hair of the Dog, though, no? That must have been Hair of the Dog, right? Oh, yeah, this was about sort of half past ten. ten. I don't know what you're talking about. This is, um, this we're is lemon it up. ginger and manuka honey. <laughs> so we're acting it up, and uh, I'm on the gin and tonic, and uh, you and Johnny were there. You'd just been out on the, the little rib thing, and uh, what do you... I can't remember what happened. You, yeah, Let, anyway. I'll, I'll finish. Right, so James, James, he, like you say, he's got a very nice boat. He said, "Look, do you want to come on it for a, for a, and have a, a bit of a, a lads' weekend? Lovely." He's got this like tender thing on the back, so you know, like when you see the nice boats and they got another boat on the back. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got that. We're burning around in Fancy. the sea, like it's really, really good. Like, yeah, like so it's on the Isle of Wight, you know, giving it, giving it the sort of Marbella look, not really, um, and. Uh, we then like sort of just chilling on the back of the boat, having a gin and tonic. And like, if you know the Isle of Wight and the needles there, like it's very, very tidal. It's a strong current. And Johnny just looked around and was like, James, is, is the boat meant to be there? So it was tied on the back of the boat. It is literally half a mile that way. It's, it's gone. Okay, it's going in. So Johnny is super fit. So he jumps in, he swims after it. So James is looking, I think oh, I've got to do the right thing. I've got to jump in and swim after it. And, you know, or I certainly did, when you watch those programmes and people are struggling in the water and you're like, yeah, I, I could handle that. You know, come on, what's wrong with you, man up? I was halfway and honestly, I, like, I, just, I, I couldn't go anymore. I was, I was, I was like in, in trouble. Um, anyway, eventually we, uh, we got the boat, we got back on and, uh, and all was good in the world. And, uh, and James got his smaller boat that goes on the back of his big boat back. <laughs> I love that this is a multiple boat story, and I've also got Baywatch sound tune going in my head. Like, oh really? Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad you got <laughs> like Baywatch, Cara. To be honest, I'm glad you got that going on in your head, Tara. Because I've got, I'm just wondering where my fucking invite was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 you, James. <laughs> <laughs> Was that was that the weekend that my phone wasn't working or something? <laughs> right. Before I um, I want to play another game with my wheel of proof, just for effect. Um, before that, I'm just going to ask you a few questions that we have had sent in, just because it gives people the opportunity, which is nice, and they do like to add things. So. My first question is for James. James, as a true Yorkshireman, my husband and I wondered why you don't own a Panther motorcycle, which is made in Cleck Heaton in Yorkshire. True. I bet he does. Unlike <laughs> <laughs> um, what Tom was saying, Tom has actually been here many, many times, been to the house. Uh, I've got a few, few bits and pieces, few uh, bikes and cars, but no, 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 no motorbike like that. I've never... To be honest with you, I've never heard of it. What's it called again? I'm going to write it down. I'll look at it tonight. Panther motorcycle. Panther. Yeah. Right. See, right. it's not just about jokes. We're learning. Right. Okay. Well, I'll be. I'll be. I'll be uh, googling that later. But yeah, I've never never heard of it. To be honest, there's a few old bits and pieces. The earliest one is a 1904. Uh, Barry, which is an old old French style motorbike. Um, but yeah, there's a few old bits and pieces, but yeah. Okay, another question. Well, actually, before I do that, because I've got them going on the side of me as well, people are massive on you guys going and doing a show together that's televised. Like, do they know what they're asking for? Really? Yeah, it, this is like yeah. a tidbit, and yeah. this is terrifying. Well, look, the, so. the, <clears throat> these two own their own production companies, so boys, make it happen. Yeah, you mean, like, I mean, you mean like a budget Gino and Gordon show? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next question to all of you How many times have you opened the fridge today 
and looked for something to eat or drink when you were actually not hungry or thirsty? Never. Who uh, said that? Never, me. What, you really? Oh, never, never. Yeah, I just, I, I like food. <laughs> <laughs> so you're so always hungry and I thirsty. Like food, I like drink, I like food, I like, yeah, I, I just, that's what I like. Okay. Take a cup away from it, that's, that's, my innards gone. <laughs> yes. what? what did you say, mate? What's gone? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, the, gin, the gin, the gin I, by I, the sounds of I it. Like, I like food, I like a nice drink. If you take that away from me, that's gone. My innards are gone. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, got ya, got ya. What the fucking down downfire? What do you want? Do you know? I think that question depends on what's in your fridge. To be fair. Can I just ask? I've just spotted. Is that a hoodie? Who? Hey, me? You? Yeah. Yeah. Right, Cara. Cara, will you tell the gentleman directly below you in the darkness over here? Tom Kerridge, do I look like the type of guy for my birthday? And I appreciate a birthday present from Tom Kerridge. Most people would be really, really thankful for this. But what do I get? What do I get from Tom Kerridge? Do I look as if I've ever worn a pair of trainers since I was 11? <laughs> but when, I, when I got to 11, I stopped wearing trainers. <laughs> and everybody should do. Hang on, there's a few things we need to clarify here. What are we talking about? And what trainers Tom, are Tom, Tom's obviously got a deal. Now he's GQ Chef of the Year and he's got an award. <laughs> there it is. So, there yeah. it is. so much GQ ag. <laughs> What's the GQ ag? It's, it's waiting to the end. It's waiting to the end. Anyway, Tom's got a collection of white trainers. Like, beyond belief. You know, if people run about clothes and Tom Kerridge's trainer collection is... Stratospheric. Him and Simon Alston, unbelievable. So Tom sent me a pair of white trainers that looks as if they've just been bleached with Tipex. Bright white trainers, right? Now, can you imagine me wearing bright white trainers for one? Secondly, can you imagine me wearing a tracksuit with a hoodie with Adidas written across the front? Right <laughs> over my tits like this. Can you imagine me wearing that? <laughs> right, it right. right over my tits. <laughs> I wish you were sat there in all of what you've just said. Mm. Not gonna I was lie. contemplating on wearing it, but I can't remember where I put it. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Tom. It's all, it's all right, mate. I, I mean, every, every year you're going to get a new hoodie and a new pair of trainers. I've got a new hoodie. <laughs> Amazing. Right. <laughs> So, <laughs> with James's rant, I'm going to send you a lamp. I'm just going to pull this back a little bit. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to play our next game, which is my uh, Wheel of Truth. No. None of you know what's on there, right? No. 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 Not a clue. So, <clears throat> you get two spins each, um, and you do have one pass. So if you don't want to answer the question, you can give it to somebody else. We okay. only have one. Okay. So Tom, I'm going to start with you. All right. What's the worst meal you've ever had? Where was it and what was it? It was um, last year in a theme last, no, is this, it, it, no, it's last year in a theme park in, um, in Portugal. Um, where it was kind of like there was yeah it was a theme a water world theme park and it was a burger and chips just in a, but it was but it was it was by far the worst thing i've ever put in my mouth it wasn't just like theme park <laughs> shit it was so bad it was just the most revolting <laughs> disgusting it, it was so it was so bad it was you know like normally you have just shit burgers you accept you're having a shit burger at a theme park and and to this be fair one likes a shit burger no but this was not a shit burger it was it wasn't even like I, it's, honestly it was it's got it was like minced up doberman head there was nothing there was no beef in it there was nothing <laughs> it was just it was stray dog 
in a bun. It was, and it had been left to go rancid. It was fucking horrible. It was by far, it, it's the only time I've just not eaten a burger. I mean, fucking look at me. I eat everything. That, I just went, nah, I just couldn't do it. However, How many bites did it take for you to realize that it was a no-go? One, one oh, bite, that's one bite. Bad. The worst thing about it was <laughs> my little man fucking loved it. <laughs> 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 of course he did. Kids will eat anything though, it's fine. Right, Paul. What we got? Oh, I mean, I feel like Tom should answer this question as we've established his ego, but which actor would you like to play you in a film? Oh, Steven Seagal with that haircut. <laughs> 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 I, look, who, who do I who do I choose? I think um, Idris Elba. Um, nice. May, nice. You may look fucking young, but you're nowhere near that cool. Or <laughs> Co or Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> That's only because your wife fancies him, <laughs> and she just shouted it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Well, they are good choices. Both of those are good choices. James. Who would play James? Oh, James, who would you like before I ask you a question? Jamie Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Oliver. Can I answer it for James? <laughs> Nigel Havers. Nigel Havers? <laughs> <laughs> He's suave, isn't he? He's always been suave. He's like the charmer. He's suaver than me, mate. I'm not suave. There you are. You're a class act. <laughs> oh, there's so much love right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, your actual question is, have you ever been caught speeding? <laughs> what? I've ever been what? Have you ever been caught speeding? That's a question for Tom. That's not for me. <laughs> I knew that was coming my way. I knew that was coming. <laughs> How long have we got for that, Tom? Uh, Tom, yeah. it's been no, I've never been caught yeah. speeding. Have you been caught speeding, Tom? How many times have you been caught speeding, Tom? Um, a, a, an awful lot. I have, I have, I have, a, I have more points on my license than we all have restaurants together. Oh, Tom Carriage's license looks like a fucking lottery ticket. <laughs> And I, I have been to court as well. So, I, yeah, I've... Oh, um, I'm learning so, so much about you. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean... I've only got to that Wikipedia page. You need to scroll down a bit. <laughs> it's not on there, James, but anyone can add it, so... It will be later. I'll be putting it on there in a pistol. Yeah. 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 Paul, can put, Paul, you can put you can put the uh, Mercedes story about leave it on there as well if you like. There's no way. <laughs> yeah. Just to it. But yeah, yes, I've been caught speeding um, a number of times, and it's yeah. not something I'm proud of. Yeah, yeah but, but no, I, I haven't been caught speeding. You've no. been caught speeding, though, James. I've never been caught speeding. Touch wood. Oh, Paul, have caught... you? Well, no, let me tell you a little oh, funny story today. I have. I've, I've got three, the, the I've naughty, got three points naughty through the post. Call. I've got three points through the post today. And today? Yeah, well, no, I've, I've posted them off and they've written back to me and said that I qualify for the speed awareness course, which is the great. Naughty, the naughty drivers course. But I can do can it. I tell you, can I tell you, please tell me you were doing 70 mile an hour in that naughty car that you got. No, <laughs> no. What were you doing? There is that, that the, the Padstow, he's referring to the Padstow uh, townhouse car, which he calls the naughty car. Which is, uh, it's an electric car and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a lovely car. Uh, anyway, I can do, today, I can do my speed awareness course via Zoom. Can you? Because of the current situation. So I haven't got to go to like one of those classrooms. So. Well, I tell you um, what, Paul, I've done we'll so many that of those. Live. I, I've done so many of those, Paul. I can give you the answers if you like. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were my next call. <laughs> See, Tara, I've not been caught speeding, you see? These two idiots, criminals. Oh. Yeah, you know why, Cara? Because he's got a track in his back garden. Yeah. Oh, no, so, okay, know, so he gets all you know his he's, speed he's out not, in his back He's not garden. been caught speeding because everywhere he goes, his chauffeur drives him. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's no there's no rules by helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They're going in, Jay. If I was there, if I was there, we wouldn't be saying this shit. <laughs> yes, we would. No, you would. No, you would. Right, next spin. Tom, we're back to you. We've had that one already. Um, did Carol Baskin kill her husband? Um. Oh, this is easy. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the whole series, I watched the whole thing and I couldn't believe it was real. Like the thing, I, I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing to watch. Did it? Yes, she did. And she fed him to the tigers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that is television gold, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't Tom, watch it for ages, and oh, then I watched Tom, it. Tom like, wow. You've cleared something up. Calories in a pack of popcorn. How many? How many popcorns can I eat for my daily intake? Sixty-three calories. A man of your size, James, you can have one hundred and twenty-three packets of them. Lovely. That's the. <laughs> but you've also already had a bottle of gin. <laughs> that doesn't count. It's liquid. Right, <laughs> <laughs> Paul. Yeah, far away. Oh, we got that. Are you a good or a bad influence? Ah. Um, I'm a good influence. I would. <laughs> I think. I mean, I've been. I've been certainly with Tom over the years. Um, in some, we've been in some scrapes together. But you know, oh, you need to another kid in your meter. <laughs> what? I, 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 oh, fuck again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sure excited because they were asking if, the question is Paul a good influence and I was thinking of all the shit that I've been in every, every situation has been because Ainsworth has been there and I was waiting for him to say no of course not and he's gone yes I'm a good influence I'm like, I'd like to see what he's like if he was a bad fucking influence <laughs> no I think I bring the, I think I bring the best out in people <laughs> <laughs> amazing Amazing. Hey, I knew you'd say you were a good influence, <laughs> and I knew they'd say otherwise. What you, do, what you do, Ainsworth, is you light the firework and then fuck off. <laughs> That's exactly what he does. Oh, that is exactly what writer. he does. That's what his number is. So, Tom, next, when we get out of this stuff, you're on the boat. Cara, you can come along. Bollocks to oh, yes. Ainsworth, geezer. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Thanks for this, Cara. <laughs> you very welcome. You're glad this has done here. wonders. <laughs> right, James, your last question. Yeah, it's the last question, isn't it? You've had two, you've had Tom, haven't you? Tom, you've had two. Oh my God, too much gin. Okay, next one it is. Too much gin? I've drunk a bottle. How do you drink a bottle? Well, nearly. Yeah, that's hang on, let me spin it again. That's not bad, is it, Tom? No, that's quite good going, that. It's all right, that. Um, James, if you were arrested, what would your friends and family assume you had done? You need, I'll, I'll call Tom for his advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, first of all, I definitely have a very, very good solicitor. Second, secondly, you had a good one. Did you have that must, Mr. Fast one? Did you have that guy? Yeah, yeah, I had him. He's very expensive, but I still have my license. Um, yeah. And then I, I, well, I, I got a bit of popcorn. A very good solicitor and a really good PR agency to not let it get in the papers. <laughs> and and if if someone told me James has been arrested, I'd be like, what's he done? I I would have gone with. I would have, I would have thought he'd have done it with a speeding ticket. Something James has been doing 160 mile an hour down the M6. That's what I my guess. All right, all right, you've just answered your own question. So these two have their own PR companies that work for them. I've never had a PR company in my life ever. So what would your friends and family think you'd been arrested for? <clears throat> Probably by trimming my balls in public, but that's that. <laughs> 
I've been on a boat with him as well, Cara. That is so you're basically cool. saying that if you got arrested, your friends and family would think you'd got done for indecent exposure. No, it's not indecent exposure. It's, it's uh, exfoliating. I've been phoning, I've been phoning up Ainsworth going, Paul, Paul, you know James got arrested last night. Paul a bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it, was it, did he have his knob out again? Yeah. <laughs> and then the Daily Mail would be having I a field day. It'd be front page. <laughs> I, I told him to get his knob out and then I fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> As I like the firework and fuck, fuck off. <laughs> Cara, I told you. Cara, I said to you when he did this, this could be your, <laughs> could be your last, you see. I know. Exactly. I did say blaze of glory though, so to be fair, it has been good fun. It has been good fun. Um we did only before, say no. I have got a couple of like shout out things that it would be nice if you said so. Um I think this is how you say it. Aileen's, it's Aileen's birthday, and she would like it if you could all wish her a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Aileen. Happy birthday, Aileen. Many happy returns. Birthday, There's also a few comments saying that you shouldn't be chefs, you should be comedians. Well, wow. is there a Cornish comedian? Is there, a, is there one? Yeah, yeah Jeff Rowe. Right? And Johnny Cowling. Oh, who? Johnny Cowling. He's really known down here, but yeah, he's very funny. Yeah. Very, very yes. funny. <laughs> That's such a provincial thing to say. Oh, yeah, he's really known down here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seven people know him. Right, I've got a... <laughs> I've got a... So, at the bar. So, as, as much as I would love to carry on talking to you, we do have to wrap this up, unfortunately. I, I have no idea how many people are watching, probably just my mum. So, <laughs> on, off, on. as far as it goes, but um, thank you so much for joining me. I've literally, I feel like James, I've never met you before, so it's so nice to meet you. But you, Paul, and Tom, I feel like I've a whole well, I'm not a mission star chef, you see. So, I, you, you, you know, no, you're I'm, too I'm not celeb a, for me, I'm, that's what it is. You're too celeb. When I, when I, when I got the staff canteen email, it went into my junk box because I've never <laughs> had one before. <laughs> staff canteen emails go. <laughs> I don't hear from I don't He's hear from you, see, so I'm not worthy. But what I've got is this. What I've got is this. What I've got is this. What have you got? He's, he's getting go. his knob out. No! <laughs> you ain't got one of these. Oh, oh my god. god. How many awards have you got? How many caters have you got? Right, let's fill this up. Katie's. Oh, the GQ issue. Let's go with the GQ issue. Let's go with the GQ issue. GQ awards, how many GQ awards have you got, Tom Coach? Uh, I've got one GQ Man of the Year um, Chef Award, 2014. Oh, Uh Yeah, GQ Chef of the Year. Yeah. Tell you what I've got. You ain't got this. Good housekeeping. <laughs> Busy woman's best friend in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Busy woman's best friend in the kitchen. You shit ain't got one of them, have you? No. No, I haven't. No, not even, not even close. Is that, is that a 2020 award? No, it's 2010, but piss off. Oh. <laughs> Why are you dusting off your 2010? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I've been doing this a long time, you see. I've been, I've been here a long time. These guys are newbies. It, I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a 400 meter sprint. But I'm only able to run 50 metres and we pass the baton on. Well, I, do you know what? I have had a brilliant... Literally, this is the best thing I've done in God knows how many weeks. I don't know what that means oh, about what going. I'm doing. Oh, or keep what going until 12 o'clock. <laughs> got it. Let's keep it going. And I, like, I've learned so much about Tom and Paul that I didn't know because... You, You'll learn a lot more when I start dialing that on Wikipedia in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping that my, I mean, I'm hoping my boss will let me do this again next week because next week I have got booked in Nigel Howarth, Richard Corrigan and Paul Heathcote. So oh, heavyweights. We'll see what they've got to say. See if they can be more, uh, 
controversial news. See if they can bring out an award that's older than 2010. Paul Heathcote, it was it, Nigel Howerton and uh, Richard, Richard Corrigan. Corrigan. An award that's older than 2010? Yeah. yeah. Fucking yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much all of you and thank you to everyone that has watched because this is <clears> i mean it's been so much fun for me i hope it's been fun for everybody else but I'm you, back are, to I mean, play my guitar now. you are sorry when i go back to play my guitar yeah Play. you can i mean Dave. i'm just gonna, I'm just gonna you gotta shut down the live stay I've been where you are, I've been stay where you are. i'm just gonna shut down the live that's all i'm gonna do so oh. I've been learning stuff for the NHS, you see. So just say bye to everyone, everyone. Bye, everyone. You're not going to let him play to the viewers, Cara? Do you want to, James? I don't mind. I've, well, I'm only learning. So Go this is then. something I've been learning. But Well, I've got to plug it in. So can we just, just talk about all your awards? That'll fill in two minutes. <laughs> Cara, do it live. That would be a really good idea. Um, I was just, hang on, let me, see if this, <laughs> let me see if this... Do you know what, actually? I can ask you a question whilst I'm waiting. Because this question made me laugh a lot. Oh. Oh, he's dropped the guitar. Tom, Tom, Paul, someone messaged and said, you know when you couldn't get eggs and toilet oil and stuff like that? <laughs> Someone yeah. messaged and says, because you couldn't get that, I Googled if you could freeze eggs. <laughs> and... <laughs> myself in. Well, I'm not asking this question. Anyway, <laughs> what are you going to play, Jay? <laughs> We're still live, by the way. I've been learning this for the... I've been learning this for all the carers out there, because I thought this was quite cool. But I've not been learning... Well, Nice. Do you know what? This is a nice opportunity, I think, for all of us to say thank you very, very oh, no, much. No, you, Cara, you haven't heard it yet. I'm learning. Right. Oh, this okay. is not, you're not you're not about to hear Oasis or any shit like that. You're not going to hear that. This is just oh, yes. hit me with I, it. I've learned I was supposed to be at Tom Carriage knows that, that I was supposed to be at Pub in the Park, wasn't I, Tom? You were, yeah. And I did a deal. I said, I oh, will come on stage with you and I'll bring the band and we'll do a bit of fun. Uh, bits and pieces. So I, I and I, while we've been on lockdown, I've been learning "Heroes" by David Bowie. Okay. <clears throat> Only two chords in. Are you going to sing as well? No, I'm not going to sing. No. Hmm. DQ Chef of the Year can sing. <laughs> That's you, Paul. <laughs> Take it away, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> right. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. I've got to tune in. Like it up, no. Carrie, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't oh. bank on this, did you? No. You won't get this this next wasn't week. in rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's where we are at the moment. Hey, I tell you what. That's more than I can do. Literally, you can't stop laughing. <laughs> it's like a lock in, isn't it? It's like a proper lock in. Like a proper one. I mean, only me and you are drinking, but yes. <laughs> what else can you play? Right? What else can you put? I mean, I feel like the viewers is probably zero now, but what else? <laughs> can you put? I bet they're not. Hold on a minute. My tax is here. <laughs> right, piss off. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm looking at the camera, let me see the picture. Oh, I thought that was quite good. <laughs> that was good. And I wasn't expecting that. 
Uh, are we done or are you doing some more? I don't know. I don't know. Are we? <laughs> Give me a second. Right. Yes. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take us off live. You're not going anywhere. I'm just gonna take us off live. Thank you very much to everybody that has watched. I don't know where James has gone. But I'm here. Here. So if we could just say <laughs> Cara, 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 can I can I join the can I join the one tomorrow night? Because these two are boring. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me, the guys you got tomorrow night are far more into they drink like fish. It's gonna be hilarious. It's, it's next week. You're more than welcome to join I'll be week. there. Karen, I'll be there. I'll okay. send Paul a light bulb and I'll send uh, Paul... Make sure we don't go in your junk then. What's that? Make sure I don't go in your junk then. Yeah, well, not now, because I've unjunked you. Because I don't never get emails from you, see? <laughs> right. Say bye to all the lovely viewers. You're not going anywhere. I'm just taking this off live. But thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Take bye. care. Bye.